session today. Just treading water, we saw the U.S. markets close overnight, so extremely quiet on the Aussie market. In fact, we only saw $2.8 billion worth of stock being traded. So it looks like a lot of people on the Australian market on holidays this week as well. It's school holidays at the moment, so we've been seeing light volumes all week. If we have a look at what traders are looking at this week, there are some big global events. The European Central Bank, the Bank of England, as well as non-farm payrolls out of the U.S. on Friday. And uh, those events all coming up. We see the European Central Bank and the Bank of England tonight and the market ex is expecting 25 basis point cut from the ECB but hoping for 50 basis points and that's because we've seen unemployment getting to a crucial stage in Europe hitting 11.1 percent in May and of course the manufacturing reads have been quite soft as well. Expecting quantitative easing out of the Bank of England and all this means that we've seen quite a bit of demand for gold but more in euro as well as in pounds so gold prices while they've actually gone down we've seen exchange traded commodity holdings of gold rising to a record of 200 uh, uh, 4212 tons we've seen uh, the london's metals exchange give us a negative lead for commodities overnight and in fact we did see bhp and rio just follow on from their London performance in line with their London performance. So BHP was down by 0.2% in both markets and Rio Tinto down by 0.5%. And of course, towards the end of our session, a bit of excitement in Fairfax where we saw a large holding of 3.7% of its shares going through. But outside of that, a pretty quiet day on the market. Price levels that we've seen at Fairfax, that it, that it does shape as a potential takeover opportunity or would people be a little bit concerned because of some of the, the headwinds in, in the general space? Under Australian takeover law, um, a company can only get up to a holding of 19.9% before they have to, uh, if they get beyond that, they have to launch a full takeover bid. Now, there is a creeping provision where they can add on another 3% holding every six months. But if we have a look at Hancock's prospecting's uh, stake, it was 18.67%. Now, if they were behind the buying in this 3.7% stake today, that would take them above that 19.9%, a trigger a full takeover bid. So it makes it unlikely yeah. that we're seeing this uh, being uh, Gina Reinhardt being a buyer of this stake and probably more likely that they're a seller of this stake, selling down their 18.7% stake down to 15%. If that's the case, that would be more instability for Fairfax. It has undergone a few years of very difficult market conditions and it comes at a time when the company is also restructuring the Fairfax uh, of the future plan, which was unveiled to the market not too long ago. Now, the shares did finish at 58.5 cents and I believe this large parcel of shares was actually done at 58 cents so holding up on the market today um, but if Gina Reinhardt does want to sell down her stake it will probably be over a period of time and that's because there's very li little liquidity in the market to absorb it at this stage so to prevent a big sell-off of the share price you'd want to do it over a large period of time if you were looking to sell down the stake but this is just adding more uncertainty to Fairfax shareholders who have been through a lot over the last couple <laughs> of months. Michael does it all actually from Hancock prospecting it was not indeed from Fairfax look no doubt something that's got a lot further to go I, let's move on a little bit there's been plenty of things I suppose uh, to focus on Julia we're talking about tough times for Fairfax potentially not the case case for flight center um, a company that continues excuse the pun but to go you know climbs higher heights if you like. <laughs> Great result by uh, Flight Centre this morning coming out with a revision of their profit guidance uh, to the upper end of their previous guidance. So previously they were forecasting profit before tax of between 270 to 290 million dollars. They've now narrowed down that range to 285 to 290 million dollars and it's quite interesting one of my favorite graphs is having a look at Flight Centre shares against the Aussie dollar and if we have a look at Flight Centre over the past year Flight Centre on top the Aussie dollar down the bottom they move basically in line with each other and if I can try and put those two together you can see that basically the movements in the two are, are, are quite uh, similar so in terms of the stock price action flight center really does track the Aussie dollar very closely but in terms of business drivers and in terms of earnings drivers it's a leisure as well as the business segments which are so important to flight centers earnings now their, their earnings are at pre GFC levels and I guess one of the key indicators of uh, international departures uh, done by John O'Shea from Bell Potter is uh, the correlation that we see with GDP and of course GDP has been quite strong in Australia a good environment for a company like uh, Flight Centre and the market really getting behind the shares today up by a massive 6.3% today. And